All right, today on Everyday H2, I'm going to teach you some cool tips and crazy tricks using Photoshop. Um, today, I'm going to remove the background from this image, but I don't really want you to be concerned with how I remove it or how well I'm going to remove it. I want you to be concerned with the hotkeys that I'm using and only really concern yourself with the hotkeys because that's what the, the format of today is all about. So I'm going to start with the quick selection tool and just start selecting away this area in the background because the sky was pretty bad that day. It was uh, a rainy day. So now you see that I've missed these areas back here um, because the quick selection tool you samples the pixels around it, definite pixels around it. So those areas aren't looked at as definite pixels. They kind of blend in with the background. So what I need to do is I need to put pull those back in and I could quick select those also but that's going to take me forever to click on those so I'd rather just paint them in. So what I'm going to show you is the quick mask mode. So when I press Q, it toggles a green background. And that green background is basically the selection that I've just made, but in an easier way to see all the stuff that I'm missing. So you can see on here in this post and then this stuff in the background. What this allows you to do is make a mask prior to making a mask. And it works the same way. You paint with white and it pulls things back in, you paint with black and it takes it away. But in this case, when you paint with black, it's showing you what it's doing on a green background. So I'm going to zoom in by pressing Alt, scroll up, and I'm going to zoom in on these areas. Now I'm going to switch to my brush key, brush tool, by pressing the B key. And now I can paint in with white. Now see, right now I've got black selected, and I don't want black selected, I want white selected. Now I could go through and I could select white, but what I'd rather do is because I've got white back here in my palette, I can press the X button, and that will swap between the two. Now if you don't have pure black and pure white selected, the way you can easily default to those is press the D key. No matter what you have in your palette, I can make this green or red right now, I'll make it red. Um, and I'll make this one green. I don't know why we're showing up in grayscale here, but now if I press for the sake of argument, I'm not going to worry about looking for it, but I'm going to press the D key and it defaults to black and white, pure black and pure white, perfect for making your masking. So now if I paint with white and make sure that I'm in the brush mode and not the quick selection tool, I can pull those areas back in that I want. Now when I toggle by pressing Q, you see how that stuff is starting to appear now. Then I'm going to move over, and I'm going to zoom in by pressing Alt up again, and Alt down with the scroll wheel, Alt up with the scroll wheel, and Alt down with the scroll wheel with my mouse, allows me to zoom in farther on my image. So now you can see my brush is a little bit too big to hit these fence posts, so I'm going to go ahead and press the left bracket key on the keyboard, and that will make my brush smaller. If I press the right bracket key, it makes it larger, and the left bracket key makes it smaller. And I'm going to paint those areas back in, start to revive those areas that the quick selection tool thought were the background, but in actuality, they just kind of fade into the background. Now again, I can swap by pressing the X key between the two, and paint in these areas. And I do all my tutorials on a PC. I do everything on a PC. I've always done everything on a PC. I was born and raised PC. If you haven't gotten the point, I love the PC. So anytime I'm doing one of these tutorials, I'm not going to be referring to a Mac. And I do that for multiple reasons. But this is the disclaimer that you're going to get now. If I press Control on a Mac, that is Command. If I press Alt on a Mac, that is Option. There, I've said it. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to swap back and forth between these again. X, the X key, just regular X, swaps back and forth between white and black. And I'm going to swap to white and start painting these areas back in. Now, I use a Wacom tablet, and that makes it really easy to paint these areas back in because the pressure of my hand on the tablet is what is responding on the screen. So the harder I press, see, the harder I press, the deeper the line I get. The lighter I press, the lighter the line I get until I get really deep. I highly suggest you buy one of these. It makes all of your stuff a lot easier. All your post-processing, everything easier. Sometimes I even surf the web with my Wacom tablet. I love it so much. 
All right, so now we're going to zoom out by pressing Alt and the scroll down. And then Alt, scroll forward. And we're going to go and paint in these areas. Again, my brush is a little too big, so I'm going to press the left bracket button, switch to white, and start painting these areas back in. So, now that I've made my selection, oh, I'm not done yet. I got this lighthouse up here to deal with because I'm, that's the focal point. Got to make sure all the brackets are on there, right? So, again, I'm going to press B for the brush and paint with white to bring things back. And press the Alt key and scroll back. And now, when I press Q, it will toggle my selection with all of the things that I've actually selected. See? All right. And now I can make this a mask. And to make this a mask, I can click on. First of all, I have to make this a an editable layer. Right now, it's a background. It's locked. So to unlock it, just double click it, press OK, and then hit this mask button. Oh, look at that. So when you click mask after you've made a selection already, what it does is it makes a mask for, it mask paints everything black that you did not select. It Whatever was selected is kept. Now, what I can do is I can press either, I can press Control Z, and I can go back, and then press Control shift I and that what that does is it's sele selected the inverse of what I've already selected and then I can make that mask again or I could have simply pressed control I on the mask and that toggles back and forth between the opposite black and white so now I'm gonna put this image in the background I took this picture in Nebraska pretty cool nice little sky going on put this in the background and there you have it we've swapped the background really easily and we've used a lot of hotkeys in the process